Hey, Keith Krantz here. In this video, we just did a couple of days ago, a live training where I'm taking you through a bunch of advanced Facebook ad optimization, troubleshooting, ads management strategies, really mastery level of the algorithm, how to really know what works with Facebook and Instagram. Okay, we've had a lot of clients over this last six to 12 months have two, three X uh, results. You know, one, one client 10 X went from 10,000 a month to 100,000 plus a month. Remember, even though in this video, I'm taking you through just a bunch of ways to understand how to scale a campaign or troubleshoot a campaign and how the algorithm actually works in order to have exponential success, you've got to get your messaging right and your offered pricing right. So that's number one. Once you have what we call an everlasting ad, this is what actually works with managing your campaigns. So you're gonna see some things here that some people will tell you that, oh, this way is better, this way is better. And I'm telling you right here now from direct experience of over $400 million in ad spend in hundreds of industries, what I'm gonna show you on this video is what's working today. We got several people having their best results in the last five or six years on Facebook and Instagram ads. Better than 2018, lower conversion costs, higher returns on ad spend. And the reason why is because they've got great ads and they understand how the platform works and how to use CBO, ABO, and really be able to scale the right way. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a rapid fire style. I have a document from a training we did a little bit ago, and I'm going to grab a few of these that I think are the most, most important elements that can get people stuck, make mistakes. So that's my rant there. Now let's go back to this and touch on a couple things. I think the third tech and setup, okay, if you're an agency, like if you're a business, this is a big one. You got to know your numbers, right? But for a lot of people, the third party tracking stuff is overhyped. For a lot of people, I'll tell you right now, the, with the overall, if you're looking at your overall numbers of conversions coming in compared to like your third party, Facebook's going to be pretty close. They're going to be within 10%. Problem is it's harder to, these work really well with seeing individual ad level. There's just a, there's just more you can do. And they have other integrations directly with your CRM and stuff. But how, however, to see if you're going to get something that's working well, you do not need these services. I don't think you need these until you're spending $500 a day consistently. So a lot of people get stuck here as well. And it's, and it ends up being a mistake because the tracking is not as bad as they claim it is to be but it isn't very important. So it just depends on where you're at. Now, the I want to hit on the CBO versus ABO one. This is another one where when it comes to how should I man structure my campaigns? Okay, CBO, again, CBO is campaign budget optimization. Now they call it Advantage campaign budget. And so now you're setting the budget at the campaign level. In, in general, mistakes that people will make is thinking that this is the best way or thinking that ad set budget optimization where the budget is set at the ad set level is the best way. They're both the best way, okay? They're both the best, okay? They're both the best. You have to play around with this. You have to get to a level of mastery of the algorithm where it doesn't, you're not afraid to try different strategies. You're in the beginning phases. So I'm testing a new offer. I don't really know how these audiences are gonna work. I don't know how this offer is gonna convert. So I'm gonna start out with ABO. A lot of times we start out with ABO. If you have an ABO campaign, Smaller budgets work awesome, okay? Smaller budgets work awesome. What does smaller budget mean? 20 to $50 a day. 20 to 30, can, 20 to 30, I'm telling you right now, can be a sweet spot. 20 to $30 a day, it's hard kind of, problem is it starts to get complex, right? 20 to $30 a day is awesome. But I would consider smaller budgets anywhere between that 20 to $200. Okay. So 20 to 200, that's going to be when you start to get over that $200 price point per ad set, 
I don't know what it is, but it just gets harder. Sometimes over 50. If you have a campaign and it's been running for a while and you're at $200 a day and it's been running for 30 days, it's stall. It's st stalling out. Okay. What's that? What does that mean? Stalling out. It means your cost per conversions are starting to go up. Okay. There's a few ways that you can fix this. One way is lower the budget. First thing you're going to do, lower the budget. You lower the budget to 100, your CPAs will probably drop or down to 50. Okay? It doesn't always work though. So lower the budget. Second thing, lower it again. It's like lower it. Now, if you're having a good, if you have a good funnel, you have to make up for that somewhere else. So that means you can raise or add another campaign. So you could raise another high-performing ad set. So while raising another ad set or creating or duplicating a new one or creating. So you might create a fairly similar one, creating or duplicating other ad set. Okay. So this, the whole strategy of duplication still works a lot of times. It's weird because there's so much randomness. The one thing you have to understand with these algorithms, with this audience, remember the audience circle when I drew all these things? Yes, it's going to start finding the person that likes to buy. If you're using a purchase conversion, it's going to find these buyers, but they're going to start to run out after a while. The other thing that's going to happen is if you get three buyers in a row that are not that perfect kind of avatar, there's somebody that's a little bit different. Or for some weird reason, yeah, it's just like a bad luck, right? It over it optimizes really fast. And this goes with Google and TikTok too. It's just, it doesn't have, Google and TikTok have a much longer, it takes them two weeks minimum to, to really start to, to hone in. And so with Facebook, it can go off out of whack faster because they're making decisions. That, so basically put it this way, is Facebook weighs each conversion or not even conversion, like each action, let's just call it action because you're optimizing on engagement. Then the engagement is the thing that's helping them decide who they want to target next. Right? So we're going to call it action. Now for the conversion campaign, that's a conversion, but Facebook weighs each action much heavier than YouTube and TikTok. And I'm not even going to get into Twitter and stuff. Twitter is still really hard to do. Twitter is still does not work with cold audiences very well, but great retargeting platform. LinkedIn, use it if your audience is on there and run ads. It's just, it's expensive and it, you're not gonna be able to scale like these other platforms. So YouTube is, LinkedIn is kind of like running pay-per-click on Google, but do it if you're, that's your, if you're in like a high level B2B market, there's no way you shouldn't do it. If you do this stuff right, you're just gonna stand out from everybody. If, and what I mean is if you get like a really good video ad on LinkedIn, it's going to work if you're in like one of those markets like software or something. Okay. So high-end B2B enterprise. Okay. So Facebook weighs each action much heavier than YouTube and TikTok. So TikTok, so Facebook, you get three random conversions and all of a sudden it starts to target the wrong freaking person and that ad set goes to shit and that's what happens. And then it's hard to come back from that. So sometimes if let's talk about that, that's another one that's really important. So this is optimization troubleshooting at the same time here, but when you, if an ad set starts going bad after several weeks, kind of like the original, the one I just talked about for 30 days, so several weeks, it's hard to get back. It's hard to get back. It's hard to, no, sorry. It's hard to come back. It's hard to come back on its own, on its own. So what I mean by that is let's give it like five days of shit in a row. So five days of shit in a row. Now, this is after it's been going good for a while. If you start a brand new campaign and it's shit the first two or three days, don't give up on it. Because that's another thing I'll hit on here. But I think a lot of people give up on ad sets too fast on Facebook. 
because they follow these rules that people have, these dead set rules. And every situation is different. There's cases where, because it, it, if you're not getting a lot of conversions, purchases, conversions, if you get to a point where you're, you go into a consolidated campaign and you're running like three ad sets in one campaign and you're spending $300 a day, but you're in learning limited. And then all of a sudden it's just going bad. Then you raise the budget. And all of a sudden you get to where your ad sets are getting 50 conversions a day and it goes to active. It'll go from shit to good. And you raise the budget. So the myth of it's hard. Every time you raise budgets, your CPAs go up. It's not always the case, but in most cases, especially when you're at these like multiple, a lot of ad sets. So if you're doing like the ABO stuff and you're doing 20 to 20, to $30 a day, or you maybe you're doing like a bunch of $50 a day ones. It's if you add budget, it will typically just the CPAs will go up. But also once you start to get over, there's some sort of general overall account level spends. So once you start to get over like $300 a day, they're, $300 a day. It's going to get harder. Total. It gets harder. It gets harder. Some of this is at ad pacing. So they'll, if you're starting to spend three, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars a day, they'll try to do it without you noticing, but they'll, your overall kind of CPMs will go up a little bit. They, it's weird. You wouldn't think they would do this because they reward you for higher, higher engage ads, right? Ads that convert, ads that have that are high engagement, have high watch times. Those are going to be lower cost. But as you get to like higher spend overall, they do start tax you a little bit, like taxing the rich. So there is a little bit of a, a an increase. Okay. And then let's say 500 to 600 plus, it gets more expensive and harder. But remember, like I said yesterday, it's not just more expensive it might be a tiny bit more expensive. But more importantly, it's harder because of the people. You're not getting the best of the best of the best when you're only spending 200 bucks a day or 150 bucks a day. So that it that's more of that comes back to your creative being really good. A lot of people that follow this process, oh, I did it. I went through the challenge. I got a good ad, but it's not good enough. We need you to come on the calls and we need to look through that and we need to rotate, find the hooks in the middle of it, bring it to the front. Find a couple other, maybe it needs to open up with a seven second soundbite of a customer that's really powerful and emotional, but also has a lot of curiosity elements to it. Because what they said was like, I can't believe that I waited this long to try this. And then you jump in and you're like, there's a new unique method that helps people achieve this result without this. And how do they do this? Or maybe you come in and you like talk, <laughs> maybe you come in <clears throat> and excuse me. So maybe you come in and explain the results or else. Yeah. There's way different ways to do this, but it depends on what the sound bites are, what your unique process is and what you're doing. So those are the things that we can come in and make things better. Do you have only image ads? Remember placement. We need to optimize on placements. So just alone, if you're spending $300 a day, but you're not if you're only doing vertical ads like nine by 16, or you're only doing image ads, that $300 a day has to be compressed into a smaller available placements. So it's like spending $500 a day. If you only have image ads, or if you only have landscape video ads, or if you only have vertical ads, remember the, when it comes to placements, what just happened. This thing just went off. It just went dark. Hold on. It's just that app. When it comes to placements with Facebook, feeds are typically the best. Okay. Feeds, Facebook ads. Okay. I'm not I'm talking about organic. Feeds are typically the best because people spend the most time on feeds on Instagram and Facebook because that's where the people they follow are making content. When they start to go to reels, and stories, stories are great too, but when they start to, but stories are sometimes don't convert as well with ads. Sometimes they're really, sometimes they depend on your video, but sometimes it can be your best placement, but you don't, you can't have as much ad copy there and stuff like that too. So that's why sometimes they don't convert as well, but they do decent on mobile, but feeds are typically the best because people spend a lot of time there. 
and you can't get into feeds if you're only doing nine by 16. Okay. So if you shot your video nine by 16, then edit it to four by five. Okay. So you don't have to get the square because that's kind of hard to do. So now go to four by five. If you shot it horizontal, which is what I recommend, shoot at landscape, then edit down to square. If you feel like four by five is better for you and you're going to, you have a lot of people that are in stories and stuff like that, then, you know, don't use square, use four by five. If you have a lot younger audience, you might find that four by five works better than square. If you have like an audience that's maybe a little more on Facebook compared to Instagram, or maybe they're just a little bit older, they're on the feeds even more, less on reels and stories. So this, you might find one or the other is going to be better, <clears throat> but it might be hard to do. Pick one or split test, and you can do that. So with these audiences, the thing to remember is that the more you can maximize placements with great ads, the better, right? So we need images, we need videos. And when your ads start to burn out, sometimes you just need to reset it. So sometimes you need, what I said, you can lower the budget, right? Sometimes you need to pause it. So you can reset by lowering budget. You might need to pause ad set or campaign. And you can come back to it in three weeks and it'll work awesome again. This happens all the time. Pause ad set for one to three weeks. This is assuming you have everything else working, right? You got your offer pricing dialed in. You're converting people your ads are really good, but this is where the stuff that comes in that people have where they, so other, now another way to reactivate a campaign is this right here. So the bid strategy. So you could go from automatic bidding here. So this is where up here, I'm like, okay, if you, uh, let's say you lower the budget, like this was stalling out. So you lowered it while also creating another rate raising another ad set or creating another ad set. Another thing you can do is if it's been working for a while and then all of a sudden it burn out, you can change the bid method. So change from auto to manual, or you can, sometimes you can like change from to, to like return on ad spend. You can change that. Facebook's changing what they give you all the time. This is going to look different today than it will in two months sometimes. But the point is, if you, okay, automatic is a standard to start with. Now change it, put a number in there or change it from one setting to another inside the same ad set. Okay. Now a good way to scale, if you're trying to scale and you're doing the ad set budget, so you have a lot of ad sets, you can duplicate a campaign or you can duplicate an ad set from automatic bidding and have another one at where you're using the bid cap, where you're setting your own manual bid. This is like the better one. But if you have one that's been running for a while and it's stalled out, then just change it. Just edit it itself because it's already stalled out, right? So you could edit it. You can also pause it. There's a lot of ways to do this if you've got the most important stuff done right. And it's some of it's throwing spaghetti at the wall. But knowing that, okay, these are tools in your arsenal that you can do. You can change this stuff up. As you start to get better ads and start to get more results and know what's working, see if you can do a CBO campaign and really start to consolidate. So maybe you have two ad sets in it. One has all your interests and one has all your look likes. Or maybe you have just two and you have one has all your best interests because they work better. And the other ad set has all of just broad because it's hard to get more than two ad sets because you want to get to that 50 per, let's say you go to consolidate it here. Can you get, make, can you get to 50 conversions per week? So it goes from learning limited to active. So that's going to be at the ad set level. Okay. Whether you are running it as a CBO. It's really ACB, right? That's what it's called now, ACB. 
or CBO on, or you're using ad set budget optimization, you need about 50 per week. And now it'll optimize. If you have a webinar funnel and you have a thousand dollar product, you can optimize on purchase. Manny went from averaging $600 per purchase to 200 by just changing from lead optimization to purchase optimization for a thousand dollar webinar. And he's using ABO for most of his ad sets. So he's not getting into active mode in any of them at this point. <clears throat> so it's still going to optimize getting one sale per day, two sales per day. But if you have something that has a like $27 product, you can get to you can get to active mode with CBO campaign like this with $500 a day. If it's a 27, if you have a really good cost per purchase with a $27 product, you can be at like active with at 500, 600 bucks a day, but you have to have your cost per purchase down to about pretty low and it'll go to active. And it's pretty sweet if you got that, especially if you have a good evergreen product offer that you can keep running. Okay. <clears throat> Lifetime, this is another one, right? We had a client not too long ago, just trying to spend lots of money, right? Three, four ad accounts, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 a day. And one of the ways to that worked well is going to lifetime budgets and setting like 30-day, 60-day lifetimes. So you're just doing the math. So if the goal for this campaign is to spend hundred dollars per day, then you could do a $30 budget. So if you're doing in lifetime, it takes longer to optimize, but it's another way for, to give the algorithm more power. The more you can give the algorithm to do its thing on both, on all these platforms, the better. That's why they're starting to force you to do it on Google a lot more, right? They're starting to take away, they're taking, they took away similar audiences. They're making you use their AI because it's freaking smart. They're machine learning. But if you go from day, so if your goal is to spend a hundred dollars a day, that's hard to read. So if your goal is to spend a hundred dollars a day and you want to do a 30 day lifetime, then you're just going to do what's one times 30, 3000, right? So you're going to do a lifetime, 3000 bucks, 3K, and then set the date for 30 days from now, 30 days out. So in this campaign, if you're going to do a lifetime, I would recommend doing 30 to 60 days. Okay. And give it, wait one week before you decide on anything. One week before any decisions. So if you're going to do this, you got to be patient because it's going to take a while. It might not. I might get lucky right out of the gate, but your CPAs will probably come down after a week. And then what you can do is you can just edit that campaign and start pushing the date out, right? So just edit the date, edit end date after weekly or biweekly, depending on what your situation is, weekly or biweekly. Expanded audience, where to go? This one right here. Okay, so another one here. Custom audiences, look, these are just your warm audiences, right? So look like audiences. Typically, I like to start with a bundle of 1% lookalikes, but don't be afraid to go broader, 10%, 5%. If you're in a smaller area, then if you're in like a regional area, like a state or a small country in Europe, then my, you're probably going to, I would probably start with 5% lookalikes with one of my ad sets my best three or four or maybe three percent but is it okay to start with one percent yeah absolutely especially if you have three or four good lookalikes purchases leads those are the best but you can always if you don't have those yet you can always start with 25 percent video views too but it's just not as good and then lookalikes upload your list so use your customers but also use your entire database so you have those two separate because they're going to come up. So one of them has all your leads and all your customers. The other one has just all your customers. Then what you can all, then you also use the pixel, the purchase pixel, because that's different. And that will probably be your best one over time. If you have campaigns that are running traffic to a, if you're optimizing on a purchase, then over time, you're going to find your purchase event. Lookalike audiences are going to be probably your best ones. 
Now, expanded audiences, Facebook always gives you that ability to click expanded. And they're letting you do this. They're asking if you want to do this now with the, with these ones too, even. Typically, we don't start out with this unless we're in like a local market or something like that. But again, I would say 60%, 70% of the time, if somebody's been running ads for a good campaign for several weeks, then expanded audience usually works better because you give the algorithm more freedom, right? So expanded audience, yes, but typically we don't start with it on. Because remember, when you click expanded audiences, it's scary because it shows this huge potential reach of 100 million people sometimes or something. But it's not, it's still, the algorithm's smart. It still knows the targeting that you set in there. So they're still going to start with the people that are most like the interest that you selected. They're just going to, they're just going to give it more leeway to start to go outside of that after you start to get version. So that's why expanded audiences is not as big of a risk as it looks. Another thing, conversion event. This is where typically we'll see a big difference. So a lot of times somebody has an application funnel, they're optimizing on application and it gets the best results. Other people, they're not able to do it. They have to optimize on the opt-in because they can't get enough applications and it's not working as well. But typically once you can get to the point where you're starting to op optimize on a lower purchase event, like a purchase or application booked, you might not have all your ad spend on that, focused on that, but a percentage of it. If you're optimizing on a cost per lead compared to cost per purchase. Yeah, we're not seeing your board there, Keith. Oh. Yeah, hold on one second here. 10 more minutes, that's it. Okay, let's say you're driving traffic to a landing page. Opt-in. And there's a product here. This is called a $47 product. And we'll just, there's not whatever. Then you got to thank you. We're just going to use these two for now. If you are, if you're saying, okay, let's run a, let's optimize on a lead. So we're going to do a lead optimization. Then your cost per lead, cost per purchase, cost per video view. So let's say your lead optimization and you're doing good. So your cost per lead is five bucks, $5 per lead. Your cost per purchase on this $47 might be, say it's 75. Let's say your average order value in this case, your average order value equals, let's say it's 70. Okay, let's say it's 70. So I'm gonna make this a little higher. Cost per purchase on the lead optimization might end up being like eight. Let's say it's 85. Cost per video view, it's 19 cents. If you're doing a purchase optimization, so it's set in this within the sales campaign objective, but you're choosing purchase at the ad set level, your cost per lead might be ten dollars. Your cost per purchase might be move this down. Your cost per purchase might be 50. 50 and your cost per video view, let's say it's 20. So is it worth doing both? Yeah, it probably is. Because you're getting a lot more leads for a cheaper price. And it might not be, it might end up being, let's say this might end up being $8. And maybe eight to five or nine to five, but it's going to be very close to what you're seeing here. It's going to be a difference. And so when it comes to your cash flow, that's why we can, when, if we can ever get to this, the better, even if you're selling a thousand dollar product, but it doesn't ever, it doesn't mean you kill this. Now some people do, cause they're like, they want to get as many customers and spend as much money as they can. Some people still want to spend a certain amount on leads because they're okay going negative for a while because they're getting twice as many leads with the same amount of dollars. Then when you talk about your, let's say you're optimizing on engagement or video, and you're using video view objective. So now you're optimizing on engagement here. Now your cost per lead, you might get some leads on it, but your cost per lead is probably, I don't know, 35. Let's say it's 40. Uh, cost per purchase, 1,000. <laughs> cost per video view, 1 cent. So that's the difference. And your cost per purchase may be higher than that because you just don't get many purchases the way the algorithm it used to be different. But now it's, so you got to understand this when you're choosing these things. 
it needs to be fluid. You need, you might have to start here and then eventually move to here. And then maybe you have 80, 20. So you got 20% here and 80% here. Right. But you started out where it was a hundred percent here, maybe. And then over time you shifted where it ended up with 80% here and 20% here, or maybe it was 50, 50 or 40, 60. All that depends on what your results are. There's no formula for this. It's what your results are. You need to man manage it based on your results and your, your ability, the cash flow, right? So some people, we work with clients where they're like, we want to go negative for 90 days. So we want to, we want to get as many, we want to do a app. We want to do a, we're in the fitness industry. We have a freaking 90 day email sequence and we're using a survey funnel, quiz funnel, old school direct response. All they want to do is get it leads and we're okay with losing money on the front end because we want as many leads as possible because we do big promotions and we have a really high pressure email list so that they're going to be a little different than somebody that might need to go purchase closer to purchase right away because they want to use ads to create cash flow. Andres has a question that's I think relevant. So two questions. There's a generalization. Okay. This must be like a market in the industry that when you create ads in Facebook, you don't target as it will exhaust the target and Facebook has good capabilities finding the audience along as long as it's called out on the ads. This makes better targeting. Is this true? Or shall we do targeting? Yes, this is true, but you still should do targeting. And what that means is one ad set should be broad, no targeting, right? So if you look at that Lucid chart that I had up the other day, one of the ad sets in that consolidated campaign was a broad audience, no targeting. You should always have, whether you're doing ad set budget optimization or CBO. So both campaigns, you should be testing this out and it will fluctuate. Where's that? Yeah, so whether you're doing this or this, you should always be using a broad, a general. And if it doesn't work, it stops for a while and pause it and try it again. Because sometimes broad, no targeting will work like crap for a while. Sometimes it'll work good right out of the gate and then it'll burn out. Because remember, Facebook is puts more weight on each individual conversions. So their ads can burn out faster, but they also can optimize faster and they can get out of whack. But don't kill your ads after three days if, it hasn't had, if it only has two or 3,000 impressions, you need to wait. You need to give it a little more time a lot of times too. So, for a software product demo conversion ad, what is your recommendation for funnel? The funnel video focuses on the price offer, FOMO, et cetera, as opposed to further software demo. Yeah, that's a tough. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a hard question to answer without looking at it. I'd have to look at the situation. So, one of the things with software where most people get wrong is they're focusing their marketing too much on the software itself instead of the big promise of the result that the software gives people. So with your ads, it needs to be focused on how you can pump out a hundred videos a month that will increase your audience and increase your business using this strategy. The way to do it is to make sure you have three videos a day, every day that ends up being 99 videos a month. And you can either make three videos a, a day and, and struggle, or you can use this AI software. So you want to show, you need to use your marketing to, prom, to promote the strategy, how to get more customers using this new way of marketing, using one page in your funnel, sign up for this webinar and we'll show you how, okay. Simplify. Don't use all these other pages. You just need one good page and it needs to have this thing and you can do it yourself or you can buy Sam cart and we have all the templates for you. For us, like for example, the new ad builder tool that we're working on. It's, I want to demonstrate that, but I also want the hook should be how to grow your business, how to double your sales using this new way to tell stories based on your unique assets and personality and be able to do it fast without being a copywriter. And in order to grow, you need to be able to run ads in multiple platforms and run video ads, but not just follow all these copy and paste templates. And this is how you do it. And you use these other, these are like another hook is like, Hey, these are the ad building blocks. These are the elements that you need to make an ad good. And I can teach you all those. And Hey, by the way, we have this tool where you can drag and drop these ad builders and you can get the physical cards and everything. And we have examples that you can model, right? So I'm, my promise isn't the ad builder. My promise is growing the business and making, and then another promise is making good videos using these drag and drop, like using the right ad building blocks based on your personality, the right hook elements based on your personality. And then you show them what, what kind of hook elements work. And then, hey, by the way, we have all those and we have examples of all of them in action and we make it easy for you to follow that script. So we're 
trying to make that process way faster and easier. Okay, we're out of time. We're going to wrap this one up, guys. And if you want some more help or if you're interested in working at some level, if you have any questions, just email me, book a call. Other than that, hope this is helpful. And we will do some more hot seats and do a little session that covers more questions and some more optimization stuff. All right. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hope this was helpful. Talk to y'all soon. See ya.